Hi, it's Matt. Tonight, I'm going on a mode of transport that I've never been on before. A sleeper train. I've got a friend in Edinburgh, 400 miles north of London, and I think I've found a way of day tripping it. While I sit and wait for the train in Edinburgh, I'll explain what's going on. I started in London that morning and got a plane to Edinburgh from London City Airport. It took about an hour and landed around 10am. I had 13 hours to spend in Edinburgh, in which I met up with a friend and managed to only take four photos, so you'll be seeing no more of that. The plan for the trip home is to use a sleeper train. There are two sleeper services in the UK, the Night Riviera between Cornwall and London, and my home for the night, the Caledonian sleeper between Scotland and London. It is 10 past 11. I'm here at Edinburgh Waverley Station, which is mostly empty given the time of night. Standing outside the Caledonian sleeper waiting for them to let me in. I have a cabin for the night, a bed waiting for me, and I'm really hoping that it's going to be nice and cosy because I've spent the entire day in Edinburgh. I am knackered. I have done, I think, 25,000 steps with a friend around the place. So I'm hoping it's nice and comfy. Okay, here we go. God, this is a tight corridor. It's a very tight corridor. So I think I'm in number three. Okay. <laughs> what have we got? So we've got a bunk at the top. Got a bunk at the bottom. A sink. A loo. A shower. I think this will do for the night. I've stayed in worse looking hotels. Now the main thing I've wondered about this is will I fit in the bed? I'm six foot four, 193 centimeters. Now I, I read these beds are 190 centimeters. So I know I'm gonna to have to curl up, which is fine. I curl up a bit anyway, but let's see how I do. You're gonna to get to see me from the foot end. The question is how do I get in? I'm not the most flexible. Oh, that's fine. There's loads of from. Oh, we're on the move. Do I have a light switch? Oh yeah. Oh, this is well cool. Bye bye, Edinburgh. Next, I went for a nosy down the train. Well, I'm not hitting my head on anything, it's just everything else. I found the club car, had a little sit down, and in all honesty, I was just too tired to think of anything to say. It's all right, yeah. So I walked down to my end of the train and got back into bed. This is great, there's loads of room. I can stretch right out. Or is it? I was expecting it to be way more closed in. What have I got up here? Got some charge. Is that temperature knob? Oh, cool. The light's dimmable. Ooh. And what if I turn it off completely? I tell you what, it's weird being able to lie in bed and look out of a train window. That's not a combination I've seen before. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed. I'll let you know how the sleep is in the morning. Nighty night. Morning. It's 6.20. I've had some sleep. Way more than I'd have had if I was sat in a seat on the train. But still not loads. Pretty much woke up every hour. Either because of movement or just because I got too hot. It's a very warm duvet. The train is due in in about 40 minutes. I set my alarm for now so I have time to have a go with the shower. 
last night there was a breakfast order for hanger. Check off what you want for breakfast, hang it on the outside of the door. And I think someone's meant to be bringing me what I asked for at 20 to 7, so I should probably get in the shower now. So I'm not naked when they arrive. <laughs> I'm now showered, and just as I was thinking, oh, was I in the shower as they brought breakfast? I've got some breakfast. The shower itself, fine. It's a push button, and then the button lasts for a bit, then you have to push it again, and the shower, but that's fine. Got a coffee. More milk than I would ever need. Cereal bar. And I ordered porridge. As I was eating, I realised I'd get a better view out the window with no reflections if I leaned over and turned the light off. Once I'd finished up my porridge, I lay back in bed looking out the window trying not to doze off. It amused me seeing the commuters go past, and I did wonder if they saw anything unexpected in any of the other cabins. Though I suppose they were going too fast to see anything. Anyway, a short time after, we rolled into London Euston Station. Oh, we might be here. There's not much room to move in here, but that means they've maximised the bed space. Hello. Hi, hey. I'm just getting ready, yeah? Yeah, yeah, coming out in a minute. Thank you. Right, let's go out in public again. Bye bye, little room. Interestingly, we set off going that way and we've arrived going this way. When we got shunted at some point in the night or joined up with another train or something, we must have changed direction. I feel a lot fresher than I would have done if I'd have taken the last normal train back here. And the little shower on board helped. But I haven't had a lot of sleep. Luckily, I've got no plans right now. And I might have a little nap when I get home. <laughs> Whether I'd recommend it or not depends on the price, emissions and timing. While it's way more eco-friendly than flying, I could probably have got a hotel and a flight back the next morning for the same price. But the last sleeper train back that day was several hours later than the last flight, and it got me into London earlier than the first flight the next day would have. So would I recommend it? Uh -huh.